I pre pre prepared another presentation here, and this one is kind of close to my heart because I really like tracking secret aircraft and things that are classified and looking at budget items. And so this is kind of a, a special presentation for me. And I want to start with this slide right here. And what you're looking at is the Galveston Key offshore oil drilling platform. And an argument could be made that this is the most historic drilling platform in the world, but it doesn't have anything to do with oil, <laughs> something that took place in August of 89 is what is actually happening here. So I'm going to go to the next slide here. And you'll see this is News UK, December 14th, 1992. Oil rig engineer sketches secret U.S. spy aircraft. And if we do a follow-up, this is a little bit later now. The U.S. Sun, September 11th, 2022. Black Book, mystery as top secret hypersonic 5,000 mile an hour U.S. spy plane spotted flanked by two fighter jets flying near Britain. So what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? We are talking about the August 1989 sighting by Chris Gibson, trained aircraft observer, over the Galveston Key, August 1989. So this is a historic event. This is what kind of kicked off the black aircraft research all around the world. This is the gentleman who who really originated all of this. So credit goes to Chris Gibson. So after this happened, he drew a sketch of this thing. And I'm going to show you what his sketch looked like here. This is his original sketch. Uh, this is by Chris Gibson. So credit goes to him. So what you've got here is a KC-135. And then off its left wing were two F-111s with their wings in the outswept position. Now, trailing the KC-135 tanker, was a black 75 degree swept wing isosceles triangle. And so I'm just gonna go over his little notes here. He says, matte black with no detail visible. And then it says, this appeared to be refueling from the KC-135 uh, and similar in size to the F-111s, assuming all aircraft were at the same level. Then over here, You've got the two F-111s, F-111s and fully spread wings and appeared to keep uh, station on the port side of the uh, of the 135. Altitude couldn't say accurately, but no contrails were visible and below a hazy cloud layer. So the point being is this black triangle that was in back of the KC-135 could not be confused with the F-111s because if the F-111s retracted their wings back, the nose would be much longer. So this was something different. This is something completely different here. I'm going to do a quick check in here. Uh, Brendan Harding. Yes, I've heard of this sighting. Mark, yes, no, hello. Uh, JBW, it's, it would it'd be nice if you could get a hold of the 135 air crew. Yes, I would love to. Uh, we need to talk to the tanker boys. That's a good point. Renee, awesome. Sick extra alien UFO drawings, illustrations, and pictures. Uh, hertz are so it's obviously not anti grav, but JP4 powered. Richie Gray, I like a lot. Billy Joe's, okay, yeah. So, no, this is not an anti grav. This is a, I wouldn't call it conventionally powered propulsion system, but, and we'll get into that. Let's continue on here. So, this is directly from uh, UFO Files, David Clark. They had kind of a, a little bit of an interview, and this is what it says here. This is directly from Chris Gibson. His attention was attracted by a colleague who returned from the deck calling out, have a look at this. I looked up, saw a KC-135 tanker and two F-111s, but was amazed to see the triangle. I am trained in recognition, but this triangle had me stop dead. My first thought was that it was another F-111, but it was too long and it didn't look like one. My next thought was that this was an F-117 as the highly swept platform of the stealth fighter had just been made public. Again, the triangle was too long and had no gaps. So this was absolutely not an F-117. It was not an F-111 with the wings swept back. This is something completely different coming from a uh, reliable witness here. Let's go on here. So I, I took his drawing, I cleaned it up, and came up with this little bit more refined drawing here. So you can see the KC-135. You've got this 
secret triangle, 75 degree swept wing configuration, and then flanked off to the left are two F-111s with their wings in the outswept position. This event happened. This is a true event. This actually did take place. This is not a science fiction story. This is something that actually took place. I've got Rockwell International down here for a specific reason, uh, and I want to get into that later. But there was another contractor involved who will sort of give a hint here. Now, X marks the spot. Where did this take place? In this case, Star marks the spot. Where he saw this from the deck of the Galveston Key offshore oil drilling platform was 100 miles northeast of Great Yarmouth. So you've got Netherlands, and then off to the left, you've got Great Narmouth. So if you go northeast 100 miles, that's where this took place. So this thing might have been coming back from a uh, testing range or some type of a test that it was involved in here. Let, let go to the next slide. So here is his sketch, and this is Discovery Science Discovery Channel. And you can see him drawing this black 75-degree isosceles triangle. We'll do a blow up here just to give you a little bit better idea. Uh, and again, this is coming from an absolutely credible witness here. So I commissioned my good friend John McNeil to do a full color rendering over the North Sea. Um, and we've kind of reversed the angle. So now we're looking down at the scene. And uh, this is by, by John McNeil. I want to give him credit for this. So you've got the KC-135 refueling on the boom. Uh, this black isosceles triangle, and then the two F-111s with their wings outswept, again, by John McNeil. Let's go to the next illustration here. This is the newspaper article, St. Louis Post-Dispatch, December 14th, 1992. Area man is called on to help explain mysterious plane. Now, who is it? Paul Sis. I've actually met this gentleman a long time ago. Absolutely credible guy here. Worked for McDonnell Douglas. He taught at Parks College, which I went to. And I want to go into just a couple of uh, interesting points that were brought out in this article. Again, this is St. Louis Post-Dispatch, December 14th, 1992. Other sightings of mysterious high-flying fast planes have been reported near Edward Air Force Base and Beale Air Force Base in California, places where experimental and secret planes have been kept in the past. So You've got Edwards North Base Complex, which has long been known as a place for classified aircraft. And then you've got Beale Air Force Base, where SR-71s were based. So this is all kind of coming together here. Same article here. The James article was published early last week on Wednesday. Sis, who is quoted in the article, received a phone call from a Scottish businessman the man said that he had been flying into Aberdeen in northern Scotland in a company jet descending from 35,000 feet when he saw three planes below him flying in formation. The middle plane was a sort of wedge-shaped black triangle of a sort he had never seen before. On each wing, uh, wing side was an American F-111 swing wing fighter bomber. So not only do we have Chris Gibson's sighting, August 1989, but we've got this sighting of what probably is the same aircraft uh, flanked on either side by two F-111. So we've got secondary independent confirmation from another source. So now we're really locking it down here. Uh, let's go to the next one here. This is the same article. Why would the U.S. want a hypersonic airplane? The answer is reconnaissance. It could go anywhere in the world in two hours or so, flying at altitudes 100,000 feet or more, it would be difficult to find, let alone stop. It would have been there and gone. All right, so the point being is satellites have predictable orbits. So what you want is a real-time, virtually real-time, anywhere in the world in less than two hours, digital real-time reconnaissance asset. It also could be used to deploy satellites, but uh, this has unpredictable orbits and you could do kind of a sneak type mission and it'd be a lot harder to track it. So what happens here is that the man reconnaissance hypersonic aircraft is complementing the satellites. They work hand in hand. So you actually need both here. All right, let's go on to the next one. A personal view of the black aircraft scene, Chris Gibson. This is a <laughs> this is about a 10 page article written by Chris Gibson. Same gentleman that had the sighting. And in this article, he breaks down almost 10 
classified programs that are rumored to exist. People have seen sightings. There's been speculation. There's been credible sources. So this is kind of a breakdown of multiple different classified aircraft. And I just want to list what he's got here. Now, again, he was an oil exploration engineer, a geologist. And this is the kind of like the bullet items here. So first one was the Aurora, which is not the real name. Aurora was the procurement funding for the ATB stealth bomber competition. So that's what Aurora was. He also talks about the TR-3A Black Mana, something called the Mothership, AKA the Brilliant Buzzard, the A-17 slash FB-119A, the F-121, Senior Citizen, Astra, Switchblade, and the Beast of Bodmin. Now, I wanna go up here to the Mothership, AKA Brilliant Buzzard. So there is a plane probably called Black Star. This is what uh, Bill Scott had talked about. I've, I've mentioned this before, but there is absolutely something lo that looks like the XB-70 Valkyrie, but it's bigger and it has provisions to take a parasitic aircraft on the bottom of the mothership. So instead of me just giving you this information here, let me hit you with the article here. This is Atlanta Constitution, May 5th, 1992. Look at the size of this thing here. Uh, look up in the sky. It's a, um, what is it? So while gardening at his Stone Mountain home Sunday afternoon, Glenn Emery looked into the sky and saw the biggest, loudest, strangest aircraft he'd ever seen in his life. And it's been driving the local journalists crazy ever since local airports and officials at Dobbins Air Force Base told him they don't know what he's talking about, but an editor at Aviation Week uh, thinks he does. Bill Scott says it may be the first ever sighting of a mysterious aircraft with a distinctive loud pulsating noise that hundreds have been reported hearing late at night in California and Nevada. A theory by expert, he says, is that it is a supersonic spy plane being developed by the U.S. government. If that were the case, a Dobbins spoke, spokeswoman doesn't know anything about it. The only thing different on Sunday was a Metropolitan Life blimp. So you've got canards up front, massive Delta configuration. You've got winglets. And then if I go to the next slide here, this gives you the proportion of the size here. The high flying mystery of huge aircraft continues. So take a look at the beach starship in conjunction with this big mothership. That's how big this craft is. This thing is huge. Now, I don't want to mix up the aircraft. This isn't the same thing that Chris Gibson saw, but within his article, he talks about the mothership. So I just wanted to present a little bit of evidence talking about this aircraft. Uh, let's see here. Rene Cruz. Whoa, wow. Military plane, reverse engineered extraterrestrial. Um, not in this case, but might be something else. Uh, JBW, people do not look up at all. Yeah, you're right. Uh, next one. I watched a massive half football field sized dark triangle ship with three yellow orange lights at the corners go over my house back in 2000. Yeah, Francis Palmer. Thank you. That's a that's a good report. Uh, Brendan Harding. Yes, the mothership. Not an SR-70. All I can say is, yeah, absolutely. This is something different. This is a real bird. There's multiple people that have seen this mothership. All right, let's go on here. Experts say quakes may be secret spy plane. This is Star Tribune, April 8th, 1992. I'm going to rip through this one. It happened five times since June. Always a low rumble. Always at 7 a.m. Always on Thursdays, including this past Thursday. So here's this Thursday again. For residents of California's San Gabriel Valley, it's all very strange. There's a rumble. And then the ground seems to lurch. An earthquake? A Twin Cities aviation expert says it's no earthquake. The Thursday morning rumble is probably a new super uh, secret spy plane codenamed Aurora that can fly up to 4,000 miles per hour, says Bill Sweetman of Oakdale. Sweetman, who is North American technical editor of Jane's Defense Weekly, says the hypersonic aircraft apparently has been landing at an Air Force base research and development base at Groom Lake, Nevada, sometimes after 7 a.m. on several Thursdays since last summer. So why do we constantly hear about these planes being tested on Thursdays? Well, because during the mid-Reagan administration, up until probably 95 timeframe, 
Test flights were done on Thursdays because Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday is pre-flight. Thursday is the test flight. Friday's debrief. Saturday, Sunday, there's no one there at the base. So in a nutshell, that's why Thursdays are used for these test flights. Let's go to the next one here. Hypersonic Aurora, Secret Dawning, Jane's Defense Weekly, December 12th, 1992. So here is uh, Bill Sweetman's drawing of what he thought that this hypersonic aircraft might look like. And these, these craft design themselves. So you have a 75 degree swept wing configuration, lifting body configuration, where the entire craft is like almost the engine itself. And then it's pumping the fuel through the structure to cool itself because of the high heat. It, so they design themselves here. Uh, let's take a look at some of the bullet items here. Manned aircraft about the size of an SR-71. Cruise speed Mach 8, 5,300 miles an hour. Combined cycle liquid methane burning engine. That's key right there. Combined cycle liquid methane burning engine. Very key. Chris Gibson spent 12 years in the Royal Observer Corps. So you could not get a better witness than Chris Gibson. 75 degree swept wing configuration. Fuel is used as a heat sink to cool the structure of the aircraft, which includes the nose, the leading edge, and the inlets. So let's get a little bit closer here. Of course, I started digging further, and I went into the classified ads in 86. And here's one of these things that came up where they were looking for people who would be engineers to work on combined cycle engines. And here's what it says here. These engines... Uh, this is Dayton Daily News, May 4th, 1986. These engines would combine turbine technology with supersonic ramjet technology, producing a jet engine that could operate from subsonic to very high supersonic speeds. Such an engine is envisioned for the National Aerospace Plane. Let's continue here. Uh, St. Louis Post-Dispatch, September 25th, 1994. Spotlighting a soaring secret. Author publicizing black spy plane. This is uh, Bill Sweetman's Aurora book. Okay, so I want to give him credit. Let's continue on here. Consensus grows that the U.S. is testing an ultra-fast spy plane. This is Ottawa Citizen, December 26, 1992. The U.S. grounded the SR-71 Blackbird, its venerable spy in the sky, in 1990 for cost reasons after 28 years of service. So if we go to the next slide here, Rumbling swift flights, do they mean the U.S. has a new spy plane? This is Gazette, December 26, 1992. The SR-71 Blackbird was terminated in 1998 after 28 years of service. Does it have a successor? So look at the dating here. Blackbird was retired in 1990. Chris Gibson's sighting was in 89. That's at the tail end of the Reagan buildup. So there would have been enough money, time, and finances to work on design, build, test, fly, something that may have been this Aurora that Bill Sweetman talks about. The funding is there. The engineering know-how is there. Uh, the eyewitness testimonies tell the newspaper clippings are confirming it. The booming of Los Angeles on Thursdays during the early 1990s is all pointing towards something that replaced the Blackbird here. Okay, surprise in skies. Uh, some say U.S. developing new breeds of aircraft. Newsday, September 20th, 1992. Now, this might be a little bit hard to see on the bottom here, but they give you the procurement funding from 86 to 93 on the black budget in billions of dollars. So if you look at 1986, classified weapons acquisition was $16.5 billion. That would have been enough to, you know, continue the research and development leading up to the 89 sighting that Chris Gibson saw. All right, let's go on to the next one here. So this is from the John Lear collection. And uh, look at what was seen here. 75 degrees swept wing configuration, delta triangle, delta configuration. Uh, and then it says Area 51, Groom Lake, 6 a.m., 9899, fast mover, black aircraft project sighted, radio message intercepted. And it says now departing traffic, Runway 32, the fast mover, the winds calm, clear for takeoff. So apparently something like this was seen uh, departing Area 51 back in 99. So this means that hmm, this thing was probably operational. It was fielded and was seen up till 99 at the very least. So whatever this thing was, 
it was still flying in 99. Let's go on to the next slide here. New spy planes flying. The Lompoc record, sun December 6th, 1992. Now let's check in here. Uh, Brendan Harding, jet turbine to get up to Mach 3, then the ramjets kick in. Yes. Yes. Roger that. That's correct. Uh, work just fine with MHD, Magneto Hydrodynamic Propulsion System. Okay. Uh, Bobby, SR-70 retired, I think, in 1989. Yeah, that, that time, Reiner, 89, 90 time frame. Uh, Oxen's Razor, I see a story of one of our stealth drones crash in the Middle East. China and Iran have reverse engineered it, and reboot is a radar as registering as a friendly. Hmm. Disclosure is happening. Great show. Okay, thanks. Let's continue on. Now let's drill down here. We want to see who are the contractors, but then who's building the propulsion system for these hypersonic aircraft? Two organizations, without a doubt. Number one, Rockwell International's Rocket Dime Division. You can take that to the bank. And Aerojet. These two organizations, I would bet my bottom dollar, these two organizations are intimately involved in the propulsion system of multiple classified aircraft that have not been talked about, have been, not been revealed. Definitely these two organizations without a doubt here. Uh, let's go back to the December 26, 1992 article. The Pentagon announced in 1990 that it was retiring its supersonic spy plane, the SR-71 Blackbird, and would rely on for, for its future high-altitude surveillance on orbiting satellites. Well, that's not going to work completely because they have predictable orbits. You still need an either manned or unmanned hypersonic asset to supplement and complement the satellites. You absolutely do. So again, I want to thank you for your attention. What I've tried to do in this presentation is just give you a brief overview of basically the Chris Gibson sighting, what it looked like, the configuration. I wanted to follow up with independent confirmation from other witnesses that saw this craft and then talk about the defense contractors and then finally wrapping up with who was involved in the propulsion system of these vehicles. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I want to thank you for your attention.